we will continue fundamental rights in the last class we discussed article article 21 and we also you know discussed article 21a you know which was brought through 86 constitution amendment and it is important for you know what this article says free and compulsory education right so this article 21 we have already discussed so today we will start with article 22 now see article 22 is you know uh, mainly you know it, it is for protection against arrest and detention now there are some ex exceptions you know in th those ex you know the cases arrest might happen and there can be you know things like pre preventive detention so let, let's see what this article says this article says no person who is arrested shall be detained in custody without being informed now focus the keywords informed as soon as maybe on the ground for such arrest nor shall be denied nor shall be denied the right to consult consult and to be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice yeah, keyword is your choice you know okay there might be legal practitioner okay but again even if the government is providing a legal uh, you know uh, practitioner then that legal practitioner has to be the choice of that person right now similarly now here you know uh, in this uh, uh, important thing is travel time every person who is arrested and detained in custody shall be produced before the nearest magistrate now suppose see in most of the cases where uh, who arrest generally police will arrest right now you know if we say judiciary is the last shield you know before revolution happens or you know uh, you know citizens revolt or you know anarchy so judiciary is the last shield so you know suppose the police uh, police is not able to resolve the case you know dispute then people have you know people may resort to uh, judiciary but even if judiciary is not able to prevent it then what uh, people will do they will uh, you know resort to revolt so that's why we could say judiciary is the last shield now okay now let's see what this article says close to every person who is who is arrested and detained in custody shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours but there is a you know excluding the time necessary for the journey from the place of arrest to the court of magistrate you know now again you know uh, now you know sometimes this is practical thing this is important because you know some some areas might not have that you know office of magistrate but sometimes this clause is you know this is misused you know uh, when we will uh, discuss uh, you know public order and all those things that that time will come to it okay okay and uh, no person shall be detained in custody beyond the set period without the authority of the magistrate so now see the, uh, now this is the thing right so there is you know uh, these are the clauses for protection against arrest but again you know nothing in this shall apply for you know these two cases what it says here keyword is enemy alien to any person who for being who for the time being is an enemy alien right you know sometimes uh, prisoners uh, you know some suppose there is a war you know then soldiers captured and they will be called prisoners of war right uh, enemy alien or any person who is arrested written under any law okay pro or providing for preventive detention now preventive detention you know uh, although we have discussed you know the last lecture something but see you have to understand preventive detention is important right the idea of preventive detention is to prevent an illegal activity you know again i'm repeating you no know, prevent an illegal activity and generally and uh, where it is used so okay now what i'm saying this is not important for you basically generally you, you don't have to write it uh, generally it is used during the time of elections right and uh, say in the areas of uh, gnk uh, you, you must have seen on twitter right uh, uh, with the long beard right after this uh, okay article 370 related amendment came so you know that's that's thing so it is it is important but sometimes you know uh, there is a misuse but again for all these controversial things do not write in upsc uh, you have to write in upsc what the constitution says okay then there, there is a limitation that no person can be you know uh, detained for period more than three months okay so this is the thing 
Now let's see what what the next part say. For that, you know, they they constitute a advisory board. And no, now this is the keyword. You know, see, advisory board is so important that they have given place in constitution. Advisory board consists of per person who are or have been or qualified to be appointed judges of a high court. It's not like a, you know, it's a very uh, high authority uh, advisory board. Okay. And then this uh, you know board may advise for how long this uh, detention may carry on. Okay. But uh, you know. But what they say provided that nothing in this sub clause shall authorize the detention of any person beyond the maximum period prescribed by any law made by parliament. Now see here keyword is parliament. State legislature cannot make law, you know, related to preventative detention. Okay. Now I think uh, similarly, you know, uh, they are talking about you know other limitations. Okay. Uh, so that for example, you know, uh, you have to communicate. To such person, the grounds on which order has been made to arrest him. Okay, then similarly in clause six, you know uh, what they say: nothing in clause five shall require the authority making any such order as is referred in to in that clause to disclose fact which authority considered to be against the public interest to disclose. Now this is also right. So on what we have, they have arrested that that you know if the government wants cannot declare. Okay. When I say government, more or less it comes to you know uh, the practical you know to executive. Okay. Okay. Now this thing. Okay. Now okay. Now uh, what we will do? Uh, now we we have you know uh, gone through Article Twenty One and Twenty Two. Now we will go to Swas Kashyap and uh, you know do the analysis of Article Twenty One and Twenty Two. Article Twenty One analysis is important. Okay. So. Share. Okay, now this is your Swas Kashyap, Article Twenty One. Okay, as we you know discuss Article Twenty One is very simple. You know, uh, uh, you know they talk about personal liberty, right? And the procedure established by law. You know, life and personal liberty and the procedure established. These are the three key terms: life, life, personal liberty, and procedure established by law. On all the things we have explained. Okay, now, now you know when. See, in uh, when you are writing GS two paper, that time you have to quote some examples. So my view is that uh, you must quote Gopalan case. Now see, every uh, one thing you have to understand. Everybody you know every more or less uh, every aspirant will quote Kashmiran Bharti, Gauri Ranjan, Kolapna, right? Or Kolo case of you know after uh, CSC asked in 2016 about Kolo case, uh, you know more or less. But if you see, if you uh, quote co cases like Gopalan case. Uh, you know, Kharat uh, Singh case, then M C Mehta case, then M C Mehta, you know, child, child labour related, uh, and uh, your uh, Uni Krishnan, you know, Article Twenty One A. So when you quote these cases, you know, okay, then examiner will think, okay, you know, uh, you know, this aspirant is something, you know, uh, maybe more uh, more than beyond common, right? So okay, now what happened in? Uh, Gopalan case. Now, see, even why Dr. Swas Kashyap is mentioning all these cases because they are important, right? These things you will not find in newspaper because gen a journalist cannot, you know, you know, cannot uh, give that kind of intellectual discussion. So that's why you know, reading Swas Kashyap or maybe you know, some good book is important. What they say in the famous Gopalan case, personal liberty. Now, you know, in this case, they are defining what is personal liberty. You know, there is a discussion on that, debate on that. Was held to mean only liberty relating to or concerning the person or body of the individual. Okay, now see, but this is not complete. Okay, okay. Also, it also it covered protection only against arbitrary executive action. Okay, now see keyword arbitrary executive action. What well, you know? Uh, what is arbitrary? That we you know we have already discussed in the when discuss Article Twenty. Okay, but if it is something you know something is prescribed by law, then it is not arbitrary. So and so, what did they say? Article twenty one, uh, you know, covered protection only against arbitrary executive action, not you know uh, if the. Okay, okay. Now this is important. See, there what they were saying only executive action, but now later you know Supreme Court widened the ambit to say you know. 
प्रोसीजर इस्टेब्लिश बाई लॉ हैज टू बी फेयर एंड रीजनेबल ओके नाउ नाउ ओके बट डॉक्टर सुभाष कश्यप इज राइटिंग प्रोसीजर इस्टेब्लिश बाई लॉ हैज टू बी जस्ट फेयर एंड रीजनेबल now why here this you know, why what is the need of writing this see common sense is procedure established by law should be fair and reasonable but why he has written it right especially now again behind this there is a story right uh, at the appropriate time you know maybe say after 5 10 lectures uh, that time you know you will have foundation at that time you know we will discuss ki why procedure established by law had to be just fair and reasonable but at, at, for the time being please keep it in mind that this thing is important okay what they said not only executive action but also legislative action right okay executive fine here but uh, no even legislative action you know uh, cannot go against article 21 okay so now this is fine now in menka gandhi case okay menka see menka gandhi case when you are writing menka gandhi case what you know then you have to quote er right because menka gandhi you know contested many you know cases okay see uh, you will uh, when you know when reading gs2 you will find many cases related to pus pucl menka gandhi right then mc mehta case right so and then uh, sohas case uh, so all these you know all the sohas case and unicational case related to your uh, 86 amendment constitution amendment article 21a so you know keep all these things in mind so uh, when you are writing gs2 mains you know all these things should be on tips right very easily you know you should know the uh, some you know history behind them and how to know the history you know uh, read bear act and you know books like this uh, i am not sure you know uh, newspaper can get, give you know that kind of uh, foundation okay so supreme court you know what in said in gopalan case the attempt of the court should be to expand the reach and ambit of the fundamental rights rather than to attenuate their meaning and context by a process of judicial construction what they are saying fundamental rights reach has to be widened and that's what happening in article 21 right so many things right to life right to livelihood right right to you know pollution free environment even child protection so many things article 21 okay okay what they say see it say it held that right to life is not merely confined to physical existence but it to you know right to live with human dignity when you write a statement a statement like this and i say you know it will make effect when you say right to life is not you know limited to physical existence but also right to live with human dignity see same kind of statement has been written by ncrt so it is not it's not like you know some child is writing you know when uh, uh, you you know when concepts are clear everything you know you uh, you have understood the concept uh, you know done revision then your language will become simple right that's why you know uh, so try to achieve that simplicity okay okay now further you know see this, this i i find this important what they say the court further held that the non payment of minimum wages to the workers amounted to the denial of their right to live with basic human dignity and violated article 21 see how important for india if you if, you know if you do not pay minimum wages see ye mandega wagera jo hai na see there is a long street before mandega you know there were many schemes right right to related to livelihood but i can see how important it is for you know uh, say see now what the world bank is saying world bank is uh, world bank say, world bank has now become a, you know mainly poverty alleviation bank you know institution so then their goal is you know they they have now two goals first is to you know achieve 40% you know shared prosperity the keyword is shared prosperity shared prosperity for 40% bottom population and you know they have another goal to reduce the ex you know extreme poverty by right? so some percentage that percentage i don't remember but anyway you will see so now this shared prosperity for bottom 40 percent for bottom 40 percent you know how it will come through these actions right when you provide minimum wages to workers right so that that's a very very important you know so you know see uh, when you say, say you know payment dollars case okay payment dollar case and you know ilabatte you know ilabatte is running dollar one uh, pension plans 
you know say you, you know either what is for seva right seva institution so you know may quote all those things okay so what they say you know this also included right to livelihood okay so see this that's why it is very very important you know, article 21 Okay, because why it also includes because lively without livelihood who can live right? So that's why. So uh, okay, now for, see further. Now you know these are the some you know through court judgments you know various uh, judgments they have included these things under Article Twenty One. You know and now what you can do you know in your free time you can read. I will just go through quickly through four five you know points. So that so that you understand, you know how important is Article Twenty One. Okay, what they say? Okay, let's see this bonded labor, right? Bonded labor very important. That under the Bonded Labor's System Abolition Act, nineteen seventy six, it is not enough merely to identify and release bonded labors, but is more important they should be suitably rehabilitated. Point yes, otherwise you know they will again they will become bonded labor, right? Okay. Then okay, see, see Article two three zero nine IPC three zero nine was related to suicide. You know, somebody is committing suicide, then the law criminalized it, right? It is a criminal act to attempt suicide, so they declared it ultra vires. Constitution as a person cannot be forced to enjoy the right of life to detriment, right? So see, yeah, this is also has come under right to uh, life Article twenty one. Okay, now see right. See the how it is related to right uh, right to privacy. See when you are uh, talking about Aadhaar and all. Uh, see Aadhaar is just a executive uh, you know uh, pronouncement or say you know, what we call it uh, instrument. But how when you are talking about Aadhaar, talk about our constitution. When you then the best thing is to talk about Article Twenty One. Then talk about okay under Article Twenty One we have uh, you know Supreme Court has you know also. Uh, Said that uh, right to privacy is a part of, uh, you know, is a part of a right to life. In which case, People's Union of Civil Liberties. Okay, now you have to understand. While reading GS two, you will find many cases, you know, contested by PUCL. Okay, now in UPSC you can write PUCL because they will understand. But you have to understand why? Because this is an NGO, right? So this NGO contest on behalf of you know uh, many people. So you know. So it's like a kind of a facilitation because they know the judges, you know, they know the procedure, right? But again, it is a social pressure which is pushing them, okay? And sometimes you know they have, <laughs> you know, yes, sometimes they have their own vested interest. For example, for instance, one Supreme Court judge commented that there are five star NGOs, right? <laughs> five star NGOs, right? Where they have you know foreign funds and all those things. But anyway, uh, don't uh, quote all these things in UPSC. UPSC just say right what is written in Constitution. And some important cases. Now, okay. Now see this. How important, you know, what the, this uh, Supreme Court has said that hand handcuffing is permissible only in extraordinary circumstances, right? And uh, you know, and uh, when they handcuff, then uh, you know, uh, judiciary, you know, uh, they have to get in the you know a special order from the magistrate. But see. This is the Supreme Court uh, judgment, but if you see, you know, on railway stations, you might might have you know seen uh, many people being handcuffed, right? So see, railway railway police is just a you know executive, uh, uh, you know, right? So you know, uh, the Supreme Court order, but you know, who is following, right? Even judges are not following their own. <laughs> okay. Similarly, public hanging of a convicted violative of uh, Article Twenty. So uh, the idea is, you know, how wide is the ambit of uh, Article Twenty One? Okay, now see uh, under trials, that person kept in jail without being charged or tried must be released. There is a you know Law Commission report, Art Two Sixty Eight, I think yes, Two Sixty Eight Law Commission report, and this is on the you know condition of prisoners and you know prisoners uh, in India and they are talking about the bail. There you will see, you know. See now, okay. So what what is happening in that report? See generally, who writes the uh, law commission reports? The Supreme Court judges who are retired and you know they take office in here. You know they get office here and there in Delhi, and that office called law commission. And generally, they 
you know, it's, it's okay. Why we have to understand why law, law commission is required? See, the relationship between uh, judiciary and executive, even legislature, right? Uh, India, India, you know, legislature and uh, uh, executive, you know, uh, overlap. So there is kind of a tussle. There is harmony as well as tussle, right? Contradictions are there. So law commission is a way of, you know, facilitating. So, you know, those judges who retired, they come to law commission, although they submit their report to law minister, right? But they are, you know, they have come from judiciary, so it's kind of, you know, good channel. And they, these reports are very good, you know, very good reports. And uh, uh, what, okay, we are discussing what, what this report says. 260, what this report says, see, that's, uh, he was a Supreme Court judge, you know, so what, he, see, his most important uh, recommendation is, any person, right, who is, you know, imprisoned and, you know, matter is subjudice and, you know, now he's not getting bail. So what he said, uh, uh, mainly, mainly for under trials, right? So what he said, suppose he committed, you know, you know, you know, he's not a convict, you know, under trial. So what he said, suppose, you know, maximum statement for that particular punishment is, say, 10 years. Okay. If he has served one third, right? One third, and you know, then release. Otherwise, you know, complete the you know, decide uh, immediately what has to be done. Otherwise, under trial, you know, sometimes you know people are under trial, you know, and uh, let's say the, the maximum punishment is ten years, and people are under trial for eight years. See, see what is the point? <laughs> so that's why he said, okay, so uh, you know, that is logical as well. You know, once you have completed one third period of your maximum punishment, release. Otherwise, you know, decide. The judiciary has to decide. It cannot be an excuse, na? They are not sufficient judges and sufficient court. Forget all that. Uh, think about the life of a person. And there are, there are many, many people, right? Sometimes, you know, uh, even the judge said very frankly, right? In that, uh, see that most of the people in Indian prisons are minorities, right? So, you know, they will get uh, funded. It's important. Okay, now similarly, that's it. Okay, now see, this is also see, spirit trial, right? Same, is a component of personal liberty. Okay, similarly, right to travel abroad, right? People have to abroad, that is also part of personal liberty. Okay, here I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, there was a case related to phone tapping and all those things. I'm not sure it is here. Okay, let me see on the next page. Okay, this is important. Okay, you know, okay, any, any, anyway, uh, I'm not sure it is mentioned here or not, but anyway, what was the, uh, what, uh, one more right is uh, falls under the ambit of Article 21 is, uh, one cannot, one, you know, one has to uh, communicate freely on telephone. If you remember, you know, there was a case, uh, yeah, news of the world. There was a newspaper, news of the world, right? It is now no more. And, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, uh, why, why, why it, uh, you know, got wound up? Because, you know, they were involved in some, blamed, you know, there was some blame that uh, uh, they were the phone, you know, tapping uh, phones. So that's why. So uh, Article 21 clearly say, says, you know, uh, free, you know, free communication, right? Without tapping and, you know, full of privacy. Similarly, see, okay, now quote this, you know, whenever you're talking about environment in GS2 or SS, quote this one. You know, Swas so versus State of Bihar, 1991, right to pollution free air fall within Article 21. See, when you're talking about Art Article 21, you can talk about the environment policy and all those things or some, you know, some government scheme and all those things. But the most important thing is constitution. You start your, you know, argument with constitution. First start with constitution, then go to an act, then maybe executive instrument, then policy document, right? So, uh, okay. so there has to be an order, order of importance uh, and thoughts, right? Okay, now, later, you know, uh, as you know that under Article 21, Article 21 was there, okay. Now see, Article 21 is story you have to understand like this. Uh, you know, 
generally for the sake of convenience we say you know unicational case uh, but again the story started with mohani jain case mohani jain case what's the state of karnataka in 1992 this was the beginning point right in in judiciary what the supreme court extended the scope of article 21 further to include right to life and right to education so first was the this one okay then what happened okay in the same case the supreme court said that not only you know primary education but also you know higher education professional med- courses like medicine and all those things which were there but later what the court says okay uh, do not include uh, you know professional education only include primary education you know education till 6 to 14 6 sorry 6 to 14 years 6 to 14 so this thing came in unicational case okay jp unicational case so this is the way you have to court look suppose you are writing in upsc sc or gs2 you can say the story of uh, you know the story of uh, article 21 you know uh, has passed through a monogen case and unicational case and you know say one or two line that you know professor will understand because unka to kam hi hai na delhi right so but it's see in one uh, one line you can tell full story okay okay now article 21 we have already discussed 21a okay in this thing uh, uh, remember 86 constitution amendment okay okay now article 22 okay uh, we have uh, you know uh, already now see more or less thing you know uh, we, we have discussed the you know what they say they pre- prevent uh, protection against arrest and detention but there are there, there are you know some you know exceptions for example arrest under the orders of the court okay deportation of an alien okay then okay this thing we all, all already discussed that only parliament only parliament can make law you know for preventive detention laying down the circumstances and the classes of cases okay then okay see now what the what the court says courts have taken a very serious view of detention without trial except in the bona fide cases of prevented detention under a law see why why courts have because see okay you know don't write in upsc but the why why courts has to come you know uh, in picture because uh, this preventive detention clause has been misused especially during the election gn in gn kerala you know and left uh, extremism right northeast so that is the problem so that's why you know, uh, you know. <laughs> so that's a court you know court court has to come into the picture similarly okay what they say okay now okay i have to read this one the what they say deportation made in the case of preventive detention deportation made in the case of preventive detention must be considered by the union government even if it is in addition to the advisory board advisory board you know that supreme supreme court or high court judges board right or when depend or when representation under coffee posa what what is coffee posa you know this is a conservation of foreign exchange ओके अब कट गया आप लिख लेना फॉरेन एक्सचेंज फॉरेन एक्सचेंज फॉरेक्स ओके फॉरेन एक्सचेंज एंड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ स्मगलिंग ओके सो यू नो यू रिसीव्ड आफ्टर कंफर्मेशन ऑफ द ऑर्डर बाय द गवर्नमेंट सो इवन यू नो यू नो कंफर्मेशन ऑफ द ऑर्डर बाय द गवर्नमेंट इवन इन दिस केस यू नो व्हेन यू आर समबडी इज यू नो बीइंग डिटेंटेड देन कंफर्मेशन हैज टू बी बाय द गवर्नमेंट सो यू नो it is not like you know see what is the point why you know why what kachave mentioned this thing see there is a article in article 12 uh, constitution right article 21 which prevent you know arrest it cannot happen that somebody you know some executive you know some government will uh, you know have an you know will legislate a legislate an act and will misuse that act no that, that means you know we are not true to our constitution that's why you know constitution is first these articles and sorry these acts and you know all these things you may take seriously or you may not take seriously it's all up to citizens okay now article 
23 and 24. Okay. Now, you know, we, uh, I think uh, we have already uh, read it from the constitution. Okay, let's see what Article 23 says. Article 23 talks about the provision of traffic in human beings and forced labor. So, two key terms traffic in human beings and forced labor. Forced labor is also called begar. Okay, what it says traffic in human beings and begar. See, the, they have used the word begar in constitution and other similar forms of forced labor are prohibited and any contravention of this provision shall be an offense punishable in accordance with law. See why, why they have to bring all this, you know, forced labor. But this is a problem. Was, not was, is a problem also. You know, even in some rural areas, right? Uh, as we mentioned, uh, KBK area, right? KBK area of uh, Odisha, you know, most, most underdeveloped area of India. Okay, so uh, for the for the in that area there is a case, there are cases of forced labor. Okay, then the second sub clause says nothing in this article shall prevent the state from imposing compulsory service for public purposes. Okay, there is an exception. Okay, now what? How they have defined compulsory services? You know, you know. For for example, they you know they have not defined, but you know, compulsory services like military, right? Suppose there is a war, you know, soldiers have to defend, right? Simple. So, but the, you know, while imposing such services, the state shall not discriminate on grounds only of religion, race, caste, or class. Okay. See, while I am you know, discussing these lectures, you must always have a bear act with you. Okay. So, this is Article Twenty Three, and what Article Twenty Four is very important for child, child, children, right? Provision of employment. See, whenever you are talking about. Children in uh, UPSC start with Article 24. If it is relevant, you know, relevant or actually, okay, Article 24, then talk about the national child policy, right? Uh, you know, uh, Article 15.3, right? Special provisions. So, this is the way you have to talk. What they say, no child below the age of 14 year shall be employed to work in any factory or mine or engage in any. Hazardous employment. Hazardous is a keyword here. Okay, now there have been some amendments, you know, related to you know, Child Labor Act, uh, Child Labor Provision Act. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, what is the what? How important is the word hazardous? Then that we will discuss later. For the not not, not now, but you have to understand this. Uh, there, there is a keyword hazardous, which is you know, which makes sense. Okay. Now, let's see what Dr. Savas Kashyap has to say. Okay, it's more or less the same thing, you know, it, uh, Article 23 and 24, uh, you know, uh, prevent uh, child uh, traffic in human beings and forced labor. Okay, now, here the key keyword is right. What it say? Forced labor militate against human dignity. Right? Statements like this in, in your essay and GSO. Right? When this, this statement will go in your two-page notes, you know, then you will revise, then automatically in means it will, you know, you will write like this one. Okay. And why it was there? Because earlier there was Javidari system, you know, and uh, some particular people had a lot of land and other has to, you know, do begari. Okay. So that's why. Right. Okay. Now see this thing. This, uh, you know, this is important. What they say, children of prostitutes may be made to live away from them. Okay. Okay. Now why? See, because... Uh, you know, for the welfare of of a child, right? Because that environment, that social milieu, that cannot provide, you know, full prosperity, you know, full forget prosperity, even, you know, even a normal growth. So that's why, you know, they were taken away from them. Okay. Similarly, you know, uh, what, uh, as we mentioned in the, you know, Article 23B, that the state cannot uh, compel anyone to work again, but exceptions are military service, social service, right? Essential services. So these things are similarly article 24 provides employment of children in, okay, in factories and all those things. So, okay, now they are talking, they are mentioned about keeping in con right concept and human nation norms. Okay, now 
how child rights and human nation norms are related and there was a question in upsc prelims in 2018 2018 okay uh, there were two you know changes in uh, provision of child labor act okay what were those that when we will discuss uh, you know issues related to children that right but here you, it is important to understand that uh, child labor uh, norms and united nation norms run parallel okay now let's move to the right to freedom of religion okay here we have article from article 25 to 28 okay and uh, you know and this is important because see india is a community of communities right india is a secular state india became secular only in uh, 42nd constitution amendment till 42nd constitution amendment 1976 india was not a secular state although you know in in constitution it was not mentioned but you can say in spirit it was there okay that was the intention of our constitution fathers what they say uh, republic is a secular preamble describes our republic as secular and okay see our concept of secularism is in the constitution is not that of a religion or anti religion no also if you remember we were discussed secularism chapter what they say you see there is a difference between western secularism and indian secularism indian secularism is something more than sarvadham sambhav see in 2019 uh, i think 2018 that question was there what france can learn from india secularism model because india secularism is positive india is supporting all religion india secularism is not maintaining distance from religion it, what they say it means that no state religion there is equal respect and protection for all religion this means uh, it's not a wide water tight compartment between state and religion in india so remember that keyword sarv dharm sarv dharm sambhav any all religion can coexist okay prosper so but indian religion or indian uh, secular sorry indian secularism is positive because it prevents practices like untouchability right uh, i write this statement in uh, you know gs tour essay you know uh, they are looking for the, such statements you say indian secularism is positive because it prevents uh, you know heinous activities like untouchability in our society and when such activities are eradicated india will be stronger right so no? uh, right like this uh, okay so article uh, okay now you know uh, we, we will move to article 25 what article 25 talks about freedom of conscience and free profession practice and propagation of religion okay but okay now okay 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 focus on keywords conscience and free profession okay you know your conscience can be you know you may might be you may you know follow religion or may not follow religion right profession any profession practice and okay last thing is propagation of religion you have to notice this it is clearly mentioned in our constitution uh, propagation of religion is there but again propagation of religion has to you know okay there is a lot of controversy on this uh, we will discuss okay but uh, let's see uh, propagation of religion uh, does not mean that forced conversions so uh, you know or now uh, you must have read in news grab up fee and all those things right <laughs> yeah india it is india is a you know a community of community right so that's why okay now let's see in article 25 is for all person key term all person not only citizens okay and are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to you know freely profess and propagate religion okay but there are some limitation what are subject to public order public order morality health and other fundamental rights you know other provisions of our, this so you know the, this means this is just a kind of a subordinate to other some other uh, uh, fundamental rights generally see generally moral like order and uh, not in every case for example article 21 is you know is for uh, is also for all persons but article uh, you know article 21 is a very high participant among, among uh, fundamental rights but article 25 is not you know not uh, you know not very uh, i will not say name it is important but not very very important right so uh, say for example article 20 is more important if there is a clash between article 25 and 20 i think uh, judges or uh, you know they will listen to article 20 rather than 25 okay 
what they say state would be free to regulate by law any secular activity associated with religious practice and to provide for social welfare and reform or the throwing open of hindu temples to all classes of hindus okay then okay wearing of kirpan was part of, considered the part of the religious practice now see here there now they so now see here one thing is important essential and non essential religious practices okay now see what the courts uh, what the court says you know religion is uh, you know they have taken the view of religion you know something like a spirituality right uh, so for example what they say cow slaughter and bakrid is not an essential practice similarly tandav dance with lethal weapons that is not a you know essential practice okay then you know cow slaughter you know uh, cow slaughter ab uh, see now supreme court is saying you know uh, it's not a essential practice but for some you know some uh, say muslims uh, this might be essential you know uh, you know they might feel you know, okay this is our religion this is okay now okay all this is uh, about constitution you know what the constitution now my view is uh, you must uh, you know read this book hind swaraj uh, whatever my understanding is i feel like you know, nobody has dealt with this question so you know so beautifully as gandhi did gandhi the gandhi views on cow slaughter what is that see this is a very good book hardly 70 maybe may 70 80 pages it is running like on a dialogue there was a reader writer you know uh, dialogue and you know gandhi is you know uh, uh, okay so see when the congress was established in 1885 right that time also cow slaughter was very very important you know in new you know controversial right you can understand right why sir 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 yes amat what different going to different uh, you know direction and when there was a politics okay so what he said okay gandhi made two important uh, statement on cow slaughter what he said cow is important not only for hindus but also for muslims see note his words not only for hindus but also for muslims but if you know i what he said i can only request my brother muslim brothers to not slaughter a cow but if they do so right i have no right to you know uh, you know to revolt or you know uh, say you know uh, or you know, take it take it in a wrong part so what he say you know cow should be you know considered uh, sacred for both religion hindu muslim but uh, again you know somebody is uh, doing you know sacrificing it in the name of uh, religion or you know he personally considers it as a part of essential religious practices then it is fine so that was his view or uh, you know personally i feel you know this is what a gentleman can say this is fundamentally correct okay and uh, you know uh, so okay oh, also in upsc in upsc you can quote gandhi view as well as constitution you know gandhi view you can quote everywhere you know gandhi is our currency is everywhere right so this is the uh, so uh, uh, 26 article onwards we will discuss in the next class okay so uh, see you in the next class thank you